been cases of people that have levitated. Yep. And is there any, did they write anything about how they did that? It's generally, from what I've read, they're, they're in an altered state. Their consciousness is in such an energized, heightened state that it's now the bigger field. Instead of, you know, our, our spirits are, are suppressed. We, we're lucky if we occupy half of our organs. Am I suppressing anger? Well, I grew up learning how to do that, so probably, yeah. Um, so if I can occupy myself, it's the occupy myself, yourself movement in the clinical theory of everything. So if I can occupy my whole biological organism and my field that comes out a centimeter that we can visualize on a curly and photograph or we can measure the, in the German studies, you know, where they're saying, oh, the body responds as soon as it gets close to you, even if it's a vacuum. There's, there's a radiant energy field there that's me. That's, so if I'm occupying all that, and if I can occupy other orbitals on, you know, like an atomic level, same here, we have other orbital levels. When we energize our electrons further out, they can form a plasma of electrons that are so energized that they can literally give off visible light. Now, some people are more sensitive to that, but there's, there's been people in history where everybody said, that's a saint, I can see their halo. There's a halo. There's, in, in Chinese language, that, that, that head, that halo, is the, like the head of a comet, right? And, and there's the tail, which is the Birkeland currents in the body, and that's the, the, the pictogram for spirit. Originally, uh, they've, they've, you know, over the years, they've, over the centuries, they've codified it to, to be certain limited strokes, but it was sh shapes, and those have become more angular. So the original shape was not a square with, with squiggly lines and a dot in the center, but a circle with a dot in the center and squiggly lines. What's that circle with a dot in the center? What are those squiggly lines for spirit? Um, it, it's interesting. It, it corresponds to how we model the spirit body in, in clinical theory of everything, and it corresponds to many, many, many observations, even to where you know a spirit can manifest a physical, a physical body. An angel or a, hu a human who's passed can manifest physically, and often it'll be just part of a body. It'll be like the head, head down manifestation, but it, it can be the whole thing for a time. Um, there's so much we don't know, but if we can't even account for what <laughs> <laughs> what has been observed, it's like we're with blinders on, saying, oh, there's no spirit, it's just a mechanical thing, we're just going to give you these toxins and cut out the bad parts and, and you can go back to work. Well, what I heard from you is that the electromagnetic law or field or whatever, magnetism is stronger than gravity. Absolutely. Take two magnets and try to push them together when they're opposing, you so know. So then in that sense, if like our thoughts are magnets, can think outside of gravity. Oh, yes. And then that's how meditation yes. happens. But our yeah. conditioning is what blocks us from being able to think. Yeah. And, 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 and what historically, you know, the observed cases, it's generally, it's not, it's not, a, not a, a controlling small kind of thinking. It's not like a left brain thinking of, I'm going to levitate that thing, you know. And even if you can, so what? It's a party trick. But it's, when, when a person is in a lev an elevated state con of consciousness where they're in complete bliss, their body levitates because now the sp the sp it's the spirit carrying that. It's like the, ma the, the magnetic field of that magnet carrying the, the weight of the magnet. So what? It's the weight of a magnet. It's cool. Thank you. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah.